It's the latest escalation in what's been described as the worst outbreak of violence in four years. The Armenian Prime Minister has accused Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan's president says international peace talks have led nowhere. The clashes that we just recently saw along the international border of Armenia and Azerbaijan was a huge surprise to many. And we saw some certain military activities going on in the area which remained very calm for almost two years now. Last year in September, I actually visited the place where all the clashes started between the Armenian and Azerbaijani troops, right in front of the house of an old uh, local man in Mosas. At the international border, both Armenian and Azerbaijani sides, they are very dependent on what the other side is going to do. The civilian settlements are located very close to the trenches or right between the military positions of both sides. And that uh, increases the interdependency between the Armenian and Azerbaijani sides. So whenever one of them starts shooting, right away you can see uh, the, their own civilian population suffering from what their military are doing. In general, the international borders were the calm region because this area is densely populated from both sides. So we saw this international border as an area of cooperation because there are many elements of uh, interdependence of the two nations in this area, uh, starting from the farming, water problem, uh, to the security and the landmines. The agriculture and cattle breeding uh, the, are the main source of income, and therefore it's important for people to be able to work safely on their farms. So in late September 2018, two leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan made a deal and they launched the communication channel between Baku and Yerevan, which helped to control uh, the situation along the front lines, including in the border area. They changed the lives of many people uh, on the Armenian side. Last year, when I was visiting some of the villages like Chinari, Mosas, or Berkabir, people were saying that for the first time in over 30 years, they started repairing their houses. And they started reaching out to the farmland that remained inaccessible to them for a very long time. Of course, the problems were not completely eliminated, but one villager explained to me that before 2018, they were uh, cultivating their land at the night. But after 2018, the Shemagamit, so they feel much more safe, so they did uh, the farming many, many times. <laughs> Access to the farmlands is uh, extremely important because this is something that keeps people in the villages. Otherwise, if you do not have any kind of incomes, and in addition to that, you can see a threat to your kids and potential problems for your families, you just leave. Leave the area, abandon it, and you immigrate for other countries. Yes, <laughs> The upcoming several weeks so will be very important. August and September is the time when Armenians and Azerbaijanis are collecting their harvest. If they are not able to do that, that means that thousands of people will stay without any kind of income this year. It's very important for both Armenia and Azerbaijan to sustain peace in that very area for at least upcoming couple of months to allow people to collect harvest. Thank <laughs> you.
So what we need right now in the future, in the near future, to have a preventive action, preventive element in this uh, the concussion channel. So it can help them to prevent misunderstanding between the sides. This can help the local communities in the international border just to walk safely and to feel that there are guarantee by both sides that no one is going to shock them while they are working on this field.